Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got not one, but two new eight inch tablets from Amazon to check out today. This is the new Fire HD8, and we got in the HD8 and the HD8 Plus, and we'll take a look at what makes these two tablets different from each other and how they perform. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for these with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these tablets are all about. Now, the price point on these is very reasonable. The HD8 here sells for $89, and then you've got the HD8 Plus here selling for about $20 more. So let's dive into the hardware now. We're going to start with what these two tablets have in common. Uh, they both have an eight inch display. It's a 1280 by 800 display IPS, nice and bright, very nice to read on, uh, good video performance on them as well. Altogether, a really nice display for a low end device. And again, the display on the plus is the same as it is on the regular HD8. They also both have the same exact processor, an MT8168. Uh, that's a 64-bit processor to get a little techie here on you, uh, but it's running the operating system in 32-bit mode. So you're not going to be able to run 64-bit apps on these devices, uh, but the processor is capable of that should Amazon change their mind in the future. Uh, they also both have 32 gigabytes of storage in their base configuration, which is pretty generous for a low-cost tablet. That was nice to see. Uh, you'll be able to use about 24.8 gigs of that 32, but they both have the option to add an SD card if you want, and they can accept cards up to one terabyte. Uh, they both support AC wireless to get on your Wi-Fi, and altogether, uh, really nice little tablets here, even on the base model. Now, where the Plus differs is in its RAM. Uh, this has three gigabytes of RAM, and this one has two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, in most cases, for most consumers, that is not gonna make much of a difference. Uh, they will run games at the same speed, essentially, but the device with more RAM here, the Plus, uh, will allow you to run more things at once and more easily switch back and forth between them. And I'll show you a little demo of how that extra bit of RAM might help in a few instances. But I think if you are somebody who generally plays a game every once in a while and then just browses the web or whatever, you're gonna be fine with the lower price two gig model. Now, the other big differentiator of the HD8 Plus is that it supports wireless charging. So if you have a Qi charger, it's spelled QI like I do here. If you place the tablet down on the center of it, it will, most of the time, uh, begin charging itself. I'm finding it's hard sometimes to get the center point exactly dialed in there, but once you get it placed there, you can see that it started charging itself. Uh, there is an accessory item that I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes that I think is a good fit for that wireless charging feature. And again, wireless charging is on the HD8+, Plus, but not on the regular HD8. And the last difference between the two is that the HD8 Plus comes with a faster charger in the box. It's got a nine watt charger versus a five watt that comes with the HD8, but they both support faster charging. So if you were to plug a nine watt USB charger into this one, it will charge just as fast as the more expensive one will. And actually both of these support up to 15 watt charging, but neither come with a 15 watt charger. And speaking of the battery, Amazon says you'll get 12 hours of battery life on this device. Uh, in my testing, I found that if you've got the display brightness turned down and you're not playing games on it, basically sticking to the basics, you can probably get close to that point, probably in the 10 to 12 hour mark. Uh, but if you're playing games or running apps that are more demanding on the processor, that of course will impact the battery life. And the battery is the same in the Plus as it is in the regular HD8. Uh, weight on both of them is about 12 and a half ounces or 355 grams, not all that heavy. I like the size. If you've got a decent size hand here, you can palm it like this. Uh, the back is plastic, so not the best build quality, but I found over the years that these Amazon tablets can take some abuse uh, without getting damaged too easily. I've had a seven inch tablet that my kids have been using for years now, and that thing has survived a lot. And I found these things to be a little more sturdy than their uh, low cost industrial design leads you to believe. Uh, surprisingly, this has stereo speakers on it. Uh, so if you are watching content that has stereo to it, you'll hear it out of both. 
Audio quality isn't spectacular, but it's better than you might think on a low-cost tablet. It's certainly a lot better than some of the generic tablets that I've looked at. Uh, my one gripe with this is the placement of the webcam, which they decided to put here in the middle, which kind of encourages a landscape orientation. I tend to do my web conferences with my devices in portrait orientation, which is how my phone is configured and how prior versions of this tablet were configured. Uh, but the camera is not going to be here. It's going to be here. Uh, the device will, of course, work in either orientation, but just note the location of the camera is a bit odd for a tablet. Now, as for ports, both of these tablets have a USB Type-C port for charging, but it also supports USB-C devices like memory sticks and keyboards and mice and that sort of thing. Uh, just note, though, that you cannot get any display output from this, and the port runs at USB 2 speeds. Uh, your power button is here. You've got a volume rocker here and you've got a headphone jack. And again, this is common to both of the uh, tablets that Amazon is offering in this HD8 line. Uh, then you've got another camera here on the back. Uh, both cameras are two megapixels, not spectacular image quality, but if you have to take a picture of something, you've got the cameras at least on here, but you're not gonna be winning any photo awards with it. And finally, the SD card slot here is on the side. They have it protected underneath this little door here, so you can keep that card with you all the time. Again, it takes micro SD cards up to one terabyte in size, and they can be always with you there. Uh, you might see that there is a version of the tablet with special offers, and one that is more expensive without special offers. Uh, what special offers means is that you'll see some advertising subtly sprinkled about the interface here. Uh, so the most obvious one is the one you'll see on the lock screen. So you can see here it's got an ad for subscription boxes. When I unlock the tablet, and lock it again, we might see a different ad popping up here. Uh, maybe not, uh, but you will see that kind of changing over time. And that is what the special offers are. And occasionally you'll see something on the home screen here as well. Not too intrusive, but if you don't like the ads, you can uh, buy a version of the tablet without them for a little bit more money. Uh, let's take a look now at performance. We'll step through a few different things that I tested with these. I'm gonna use the entry level one for the most part because these really do perform exactly the same. And we're gonna start off with a benchmark so you can see exactly where this comes into play with other Amazon devices. Now the benchmark we ran was the 3D Mark Slingshot test. And as you can see, we got a score of 937 on both the HD8 and the HD8 Plus. Uh, these are a lot quicker than the prior edition HD8, which was great to see. Uh, but the Fire HD10 from Amazon, their 10 inch tablet, is still the best performing Amazon tablet that they have in their lineup. Uh, that one costs a little bit more, has a larger screen, but again, will perform a little better than these do. But I was pretty happy with the performance overall. And also take a look at the Galaxy Tab A that we looked at a few weeks ago from Samsung. It has a slightly larger screen, a little bit nicer build quality, but that more expensive tablet performs exactly the same as these do. And in fact, I think you can get two of these for what one of those Samsung tablets costs. So that's a pretty good deal, I think. And for games and stuff, this will do just fine. This is the, um, uh, the mobile version of Minecraft running on the uh, low-end HD8 device here. As you can see, it seems to be performing quite nicely. But let me show you where the added RAM might make a difference. Now, we've got Minecraft running on both devices here. As you can see, the HD8 Plus runs it pretty much at the same performance level that we just saw on the HD8. Uh, the HD8 here at the bottom uh, just went into nighttime mode, but Minecraft is running here. Uh, now, if I go out of here and maybe select a different game to play, let's go to the main menu and load up uh, maybe Sonic CD, uh, and we'll let that load. And I'll do the same here on the HD8 Plus. We'll load up Sonic CD on both. And of course, it'll take about the same amount of time to load the game, and we'll maybe jump into uh, a, the first level, perhaps. So let's get into it here on the... HD8 at the bottom, we'll go into start game and we'll select where we last left off and I'll do the same here on the other one. So here you go, we've got uh, the HD8 in a game, we'll get the uh, HD8 uh, plus into a game here, same spot. Okay, so now we had Minecraft running and now we switched over to Sonic the Hedgehog. Now if I go on the HD8 back to Minecraft, uh, you'll see that it basically dumped us out to the beginning of the game. So whatever game we had in progress is lost uh, because the tablet needed to make room in RAM for the other game that we loaded. 
But if we repeat this step here on the other device and switch from Sonic CD over to Minecraft, uh, we might see that load screen pop up briefly, but it's going to bring us back pretty much right where we left off on Minecraft when we switched out. So as you can see here, it didn't bring us back to the main menu. I'm back in the world that I was playing. The sun is setting now. Uh, but on this one, I've got to start over again uh, with my game because there wasn't enough RAM to keep both apps running in the background. And that's the big difference having three gigs versus two gigs might bring you here. And if you're often uh, having to switch out of your game to go and do something, you might want to opt for the three gigs in the plus version to prevent your games from getting dropped when you switch to another app. But for doing the basics here, I think two gigabytes is going to be fine. We can jump into the web browser and maybe go to the nasa.gov homepage here real quick. Uh, performance is not spectacular, but it is good enough, I think, for getting basic web browsing done. It does support AC wireless, so you will be able to take advantage of faster wireless networks. And I found it's pretty easy to, again, read text on here. And as you can see, it's a decent enough web browsing device, and it should do well with email and some other basic things you might do with it. I don't expect much of a difference between the two gig and the three gig model for web browsing, but if you do have a lot of tabs open, you might see a little faster performance as you're switching between pages. Now, a little bit earlier, I checked out one of Alex Lindsay's office hour webinars that he runs in Zoom every morning. He's a big time video production guy. Uh, he had about 40 different participants in that Zoom call and the tablet handled it just fine. The audio was good, the video seemed to work well. Uh, you just have to deal, of course, with an eight inch screen as you're watching it, but it was able to uh, do a pretty demanding web conference call with that. That was fine. Uh, Prime Video and Netflix all work well on here as well. Uh, it supports the L1 level for uh, DRM, the Widevine DRM, so that was good. Uh, and altogether, I think for media and web browsing, uh, for what it is, it's pretty good, actually, and it might exceed your expectations given the price point. Now, I do want to point out right here that these Amazon tablets are running Android as their operating system, but they are not officially sanctioned by Google, and that means you don't get any of the official Google apps. So instead of Google Chrome, you get the Silk Browser. Instead of the Google Play Store, you get the Amazon App Store. And a lot of the same apps and games are in the Amazon App Store as you'll find on Google Play. But if you bought a game on Google Play, you might have to buy it again through Amazon in order to use it on this tablet. You also don't get the official version of YouTube on your Amazon tablet either because, again, it doesn't have those official Google apps. Now, there are ways to get the official Google apps on your Amazon tablet. We're going to explore that in an upcoming video. But if you're not that technically savvy, it may not be the easiest thing to do. So if those Google Play apps are really super important to you and you're not so sure about your technical prowess, this may not be the tablet for you. Uh, but for many other folks, I think they're willing to deal with a little bit of inconvenience to get a usable tablet at a decent price. Now, both tablets support Amazon voice commands even when they are in standby mode. This was a feature that was in the prior edition. And so right now I've got the regular HD8 here in standby and I can just say, tell me the weather in New York City today. And you can see now she's responding. I'm getting a visual representation of that response. And it's working a lot like an Echo Show device might work, which is pretty nice to see. And you can see how quickly it turned itself on to hear that voice command. Uh, you have the option here to put it into show mode. And what that will do is kind of put the regular fire interface in the background and then have this stay on, again, similar to the Amazon Echo Show product, which is pretty nice. But this is one area where the HD8 Plus might be more interesting because they sell a docking station that wasn't available at the time I was shooting this video. Uh, but what you do here is you just put the HD8 Plus in it and it will automatically charge it with that wireless charging feature and it switches it into that Echo Show mode as well. And I can show you how this works though with our other charger here. So if you have the tablet in landscape orientation like so, and you place it down on that wireless charger, once it gets detected, it will automatically switch into show mode. Uh, and you can see now it's switching and now we've got that interface and I can say, show me the backyard camera. And it will pull up my backyard security camera here and all is good. And what's neat about it in this mode is that you can just go right back to the tablet interface uh, after you pick it back up again. So if I close out the security camera and take it off the charger, 
it's going to switch back into the uh, tablet mode here and you've got your device back so you don't have to go into that menu and keep switching back and forth. Uh, the other cool thing about it is that it will also load up the uh, regular apps while it's in that mode. So here we go, we're going to put it back down on the charging pad here. Again, it's challenging to get it lined up properly on the unofficial wireless chargers. We're in that mode here and I can say to it, load up HD Home Run. And it's going to pull up my TV tuner application here and uh, get it all going for us. And I could really see this working really well in a situation where you've got that uh, charging dock in your uh, kitchen or something and you can just put the tablet in there, issue a command from across the room and get your TV going with the regular app which is something that the Echo Show doesn't typically support. So that's uh, something that wasn't available at the time I was recording this video but you can see how it works at least here uh, using the uh, unofficial wireless charger that allows you to get that functionality. I think for most folks who don't need the extra RAM and the uh, wireless charging, the entry level here should do fine. Uh, they both will perform about the same as you saw, but again, I think there's some interesting use cases for the Plus Edition of these Amazon tablets. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.